Hi everyone, I hope that you uh, fared well through the storms. Um, I did, I'm happy to say that I did. Um, I just want to kind of catch up a little bit. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed some of the YouTube videos that I've posted on uh, just giving you an idea of what the actual therapies look like when therapists um, utilize the techniques. Um, just to kind of begin, I'm going to give a brief overview of existential therapy. Um, I hope you had the opportunity to read the article. We're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Uh, first of all, one of the founders uh, is Viktor Frankl. Um, he had a very interesting life. He was actually a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp um, where his parents, mother, um, his parents, his brother, his wife, and children died. He remembered their deaths. And what he dealt with is really finding a reason to continue to live. And he watched other people around them, around him, people who also lost a great deal, and finding joy and meaning in the little things. And he found that those people who were able to psychologically survive such a um, tragedy and such trauma, that when they were able to find some sort of uh, meaning in their lives, that they were able to carry on. Um, he believed in, even in terrible circumstances, we could preserve a vestige of spiritual freedom and independence of mind. Another known founder in um, existential therapy is Rollo May. Um, he had an unhappy home life. Uh, he decided the best way to reach out to people is through psychology instead of theology. Uh, most of his writings reflect a concern with the nature of human experience, such as recognizing and dealing with power, accepting freedom and responsibility, and discovering one's um, own identity. Um, and he focused more on being than solving, learning to deal with issues of sex and intimacy, growing old, facing death, and taking action in the world. And I believe he was one of the, he did an experiment um, at some point in his life where he approached uh, several women at a mall. He apparently had some anxiety with um, interacting with members of the opposite sex in a romantic way. And so what he did was he would approach different women and he approached several different women and experienced, you know, a lot of rejection. But as time progressed and the more people he approached, he found that his anxiety began to diminish and he became desensitized more to rejection, uh, which, helped him do, which helped him deal with the anxiety of um, dealing with the opposite sex. I thought that was a little interesting experiment he did on himself. Irvin Yalom is a well-known, very huge figure in group therapy. Um, when you take group therapy, if you have not yet, you will uh, probably be utilizing his textbook. Um, and anyway, he had four givens of existence or ultimate human concerns, which involve freedom and responsibility, existential isolation, meaninglessness, and death. Focus, he was focused on here and now, and he believes that therapists should be transparent regarding their own experiences. Overall, the real focus on the themes with existential therapy is uh, meaning, freedom, responsibility, anxiety, and aloneness, mortality as well. Um, the goal of existential therapy is to assist clients in their exploration of the existential givens of life. Okay, so in other words, everyone will experience death, okay? Everyone has entered the world alone and has to deal with the idea of leaving the world alone. Um, everyone has to deal with um, anxiety, just overall anxiety about being and who they are and where they want to be in life. And so uh, existential therapy focuses a lot on those givens that come in life and how we can uh, reflect on that and find meaning in our lives. It's grounded on the assumption that we are free and therefore responsible for our choices and actions. Um, we are authors of our lives and we design pathways we follow, okay? Uh, we are not victims of circumstance because to a large extent we are what we choose to be. So there's a lot of responsibility that is placed on the individual as far as their actions, situations that happen to their lives. An existential therapist is really going to uh, always redirect the client to take responsibility and accountability for uh, his or her actions and his or her life.
um, two quotes that um, Viktor Frankl used from Nietzsche were, he who has a why to live for can bear with almost any how. That which does not kill me makes me stronger. And so he developed logotherapy from that, which means therapy through meaning. All right. So he believes that in whatever circumstance that you're dealing with in life, if a client can find meaning in it, then the client can persevere through it. All right. And so really the challenge that is faced in therapy is finding purpose and finding meaning in every aspect of your life. All right. Now, Rallo May takes courage to be and our choices determine the kind of person we become. So again, there's a lot of focus again on our choices and how what we do determines who we become, how we act, and the lives that we create for ourselves. Um, the struggle within, um, between the security of dependence and the joys and pains of growth, all right? And so that's the struggle that we're dealing with is, um, is, is in dealing with independence, actually, and then, um, you know, striving for that and then just the aloneness, anxiety, and things that happen as you grow. Uh, James Buchenthal, you had an opportunity to see him a little bit briefly in a couple of videos that I posted. Um, for him, the primary tax involved um, helping clients to make new discoveries about themselves in the living moment, um, as opposed to merely talking about themselves in the living moment, as opposed to merely talking about themselves. All right. So um, values, resistance, and therapy. So just to go back to... Um, the primary task helping the client to make new discoveries about themselves in the living moment is not so much focusing on what's happening and what you're experiencing, but what you're learning from those experiences. That's the focus because as you're learning, as you're focusing on what you're learning from your experiences, then you can make meaning about that. And at the same time, you're taking responsibility for whatever's happening in your life. Okay. Um, and so I just kind of want to move forward. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I hope the video helped you a lot with um, what the therapy would look like. Um, and so the basic dimensions of human condition is a capacity for self-awareness, freedom, and responsibility, creating one's identity and establishing meaningful relationships with others, the search for meaning, purpose, values, and goals, anxiety as a condition of living, and awareness of death and non-being. And so if you think back to Stan, I know I, uh, in the past I told you about reading Stan in your book, reading about who he is. Um, just to kind of jog your memory, he is kind of the case study throughout the chapters of the book where you can see how the different therapies are applied to him in the different chapters. Um, and he often dealt with relating to others. Uh, he had a lot of, um, it sounds like mental and verbal abuse in his childhood. And as a result, he lives a life with a lot of anxiety, um, and just really searching for meaning in his life. So he is a, probably a prime candidate for this particular therapy because the therapist would probably focus with him on finding a meaning in his life for him to let go of sort of what happened in his past and take more responsibility for why his life is the way it is. Um, it's from the first, uh, from his first introduction, it sounded like he really put a lot on what happened to him growing up, how domineering his mother was and his ex-wife ended up being a domineering person. And so a lot of what happened to him, he seemed to often put that on somebody who did something to him. Whereas in existential therapy, they would have them reframe that and really look at you made choices in your life that led you to where your life is right now. You are divorced as a result of choices you made in your life. So rather than focusing on what your wife did, your ex-wife did to you, why don't you find out what you can learn from that? What behaviors did you do? What decisions did you make that led to this divorce? And that way you can move on and make better choices. Okay. And then also really having him become um, more comfortable with the idea of the reality of aloneness in life, that we all face a point in our lives where we're going to be alone. We came into this world alone and we will leave alone and that there are different points in our lives where we are alone and finding finding a way to diminish his anxiety about aloneness. All right. 
So we are both free, willful, creative, and limited. Um, and at this point, I just kind of want to talk a little bit about how this therapy really relates to um, a biblical perspective. I, and it's questioning. It's questioning of finding meaning in life, finding purpose in life, um, dealing with the anxiety of death. Um, all of that actually cl relates very closely to the Bible. It's probably one of the closest therapies to a biblical perspective existentialist is, existentialism is. Um, and then also there's a major focus in the therapeutic relationship, how having an authentic relationship between a client and therapist can actually be a healing tool. Okay. And this very much connects with, um, a biblical perspective. All right. Now, what, where it differs in terms of a biblical perspective is really the answer to the existential questions. Existential therapy really focuses a lot on clients really defining the, who they are. Uh, they are the ones who define the choices that they make, how they want their lives to be, etc. And it's not necessarily grounded in anything but whatever the client wants that to be. And we know as Christians that who we want to be as we're evolving, the meaning that we make in life, the identities we want to develop, all of that is grounded in the word of God, is grounded in mirroring Jesus Christ. And so we have something to go to, whereas existentialism doesn't necessarily have a specific uh, value or objective that a client can ground themselves in um, as they're developing their identity and dealing with anxiety and be, and finding meaning in life. And so that's where there's the biggest difference, which is pretty, which is a major difference. Um, four essential aims, aims of existential humanistic therapy is to help clients become more present to both themselves and others, um, to assist clients in identifying ways they block themselves from fuller presence, and to challenge clients to assume responsibility for designing their present lives. There's a major focus in existential therapy on the present. Uh, previously, when we looked at psychoanalytic therapy, there was a major focus on um, the past. There was also a focus on how the past affects the person now, unconscious, the unconsciousness and how that affects the individual. Um, but now with existentialism, it goes away from that and the focus really is on the present, what you're doing now, and the choices that you know that you're making now. And then finally, to encourage clients to choose more expanded ways to being on, in their daily lives, okay? So there's more of a focus on what the clients can do right now to make meaning out of their lives, to improve their lives, rather than uh, in previous psychoanalytic therapies where the focus was on understanding what happened in the past, more of a self-awareness of where they come from, and from that, that that will lead to a change in behavior. This focus is on now and what clients can actually do now to change their behavior and be more present in their lives um, and diminish their anxiety and take more responsibility for what they do in their lives. All right. Um, existential therapy is primarily concerned with understanding the subjective world of the clients to help them come to new understandings and options. So th again, this goes back to the difference between existentialism and a biblical perspective. As an existential therapist, what you'll see is um, every client that you meet with may have a different definition of their subjective world. So um, as they're redefining themselves, they're evolving, they're diminishing their anxiety, they're finding more comfort in the givens in life, um, that may look different in different clients. Whereas in a biblical perspective as Christian counselors, what we're really doing is ultimately everybody's striving to be more like Christ. So there is a specific image, there's a specific source, uh, a focus, a reference point where the client is moving towards. Um, in existentialism, that could be different for different clients. All right, so in clients, the client's experience in therapy is that experimentation with new ways of behaving in the outside world is necessary. So really it's going to be an encouragement for clients to try different things. So for instance, with Stan, um, if he has, if he's really kind of isolated himself from people as a result of him not feeling that he can relate to them, probably an experiment of the existential a therapist might recommend is that 
uh, Stan actually tries and participates in a social function. Maybe join a, a rec league or uh, go to some sort of organization meeting uh, through the school. Um, something where he is forced to interact with other people. Um, another experience in therapy is that clients must be active in the therapeutic process. For during the sessions, they must decide what fears, guilt, feelings, and anxieties they will explore. So obviously, if the therapy is focused on the client really taking responsibilities for who they are and the choices that they're making, then this therapy is definitely going to be focused on the client being completely invested in identifying uh, what needs to be worked on in therapy and in really voicing what their fears are, what their feelings are, and what their anxieties are. This is not going to be um, therapist-led. This will be more client-led because this is how they start learning how to take more responsibility for their lives. All right, so rather than being solution-oriented, existential therapy is aimed toward removing roadblocks to meaningful living and helping clients assume responsibility for their actions. So what's an example of a roadblock? Well, when we look with Stan, he's possibly dealing with some addiction. So a roadblock would be his addiction could be a roadblock. Um, his anxiety or fears or his holding on to things that happened to him his childhood, that could be a roadblock that's keeping him from finding meaning in life. So really the focus is getting those roadblocks out the way so that the client is able to take responsibility, find meaning, and then move on with their lives. All right. We talked about the relationship between the two. Uh, as far as techniques, Existential therapy is not technique oriented. It may incorporate techniques from other other models, but the real focus of um, existential therapy is a relationship between the client and the therapist. That is absolutely critical to healing. It is very important in, in existential therapy. And so they don't want to be so focused on using techniques because that may take away from the relationship that occurs between the client and the therapist. With that being said, they Different techniques can be utilized, but it shouldn't be such a scientific process that impedes the, the growing rapport between the client and the therapist. All right. All right. Um, I want to kind of go to the article and focus a little bit on um, the article that I assigned for everyone to read, to read. I hope everybody read it. And the main things I want to take, I want you to take out of it is, um, uh, the healthy existence that uh, the way that existential therapy defines healthy existence and that's through maintaining our harmonious integrated and unspontaneous relationships okay and such authenticity entails transparency honesty and openness to oneself and that's where the therapist in existential therapy it is encouraged for the therapist to show transparency um, because by showing transparency, you're modeling to the client a way that the client can also be the transparent in, its, in their own relationships, all right? Um, there's also a level of awareness that produces an experience of dread or existential anxiety. So there's a lot of focus on existential anxiety. So as people are dealing with the idea as one day you will die, uh, what if I have no meaning in my life? What about me being alone in this world? People can feel this existential anxiety. Why am I here? What is my point for being here? And so existential therapy really focuses on having the client come to turn with the fact that these are givens in life and finding meaning in life and purpose while they are here and finding freedom in the choices that they can make to make their lives meaningful so that they're not so focused on the anxiety that comes with the possibility of something as inevitable as death um, and being alone, which is inevitable. Um, another part of this article that uh, I just hope that you were able to, to get from it was just um, the essential aspect of existential therapy. It represents a warm, respectful, and authentic relationship in which the client and therapist experience a deep therapeutic encounter. All right, so you would see in existential therapy just two people who are really focused on building a relationship that is authentic, that is honest, that is transparent. And so you'll see that kind of dialogue going on between the client and the therapist. And this is completely oppositional to psychoanalysts. Um, who focus more on being a blank screen and not really, in, at least psychoanalysts at their traditional 
setting. Um, of course, we know that they've kind of evolved and they're now more connecting and recognizing the importance of having a relationship with clients. All right. Existential therapy does not view human nature as fixed, fatalistic, or deterministic. All right. Rather, individuals are seen as constantly changing. So there's a little bit more of a positive view of existential therapy on human nature than in the past on psychoanalytic theory where, and even when we talk about young, uh, the idea that there's this inner dark self, um, these inner forces, dark forces in us that kind of drive us, um, that a darker side of us. Um, whereas the focus on existential therapy is that we're constantly growing, we can constantly change, we can reinvent ourselves, we can make meaning out of our lives um, and completely change our circumstances. We just have to be aware that we have choices. We have the choices that we make that can make that happen. All right. Um, and so that's pretty much an overview of existential therapy. And thank you.